Hey. Hi, gamers. We're back again. Who could have predicted this? Daily streams of the Ace Attorney Trilogy, boys. Almost done with the, the first game. We're on the bonus episode, episode five. How are we doing, gamers? How are we doing? Ugh. This is a fair warning. This will probably not be a long stream. Probably definitely not gonna be five hours again. Like yesterday. But we're gonna play a bit. We're gonna play a bit. Definitely not finishing this episode today. But we're, we'll get we'll get a decent chunk into it. We'll learn our characters. We'll learn our characters. Ugh. So excited. So many new characters we gotta voice. Love it. <laughs> I ended yesterday at 11 o'clock exactly. Fun. It's about to be six. Let's go. Boom. Ooh. It's been two months since Maya left the office. Oh man. My keyboard, not my keyboard. My controller, I never, I never hooked up my controller. Oh. Hold on. Let me do that now. Oh, I forgot about the control. I knew I was forgetting something. I, I always do. Let's plug it in. Beep. There we go. Do, 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 do. That was me, not you. <laughs> it's been two months since Maya left the office. Two months without a single trial. Hello. I've had offers, but none I took. That is, until the day that girl showed up. February 22nd, 10.02 a.m. Wright & Co. Law Offices. Why do I come here to my office, to the office every day? It's not like I want to work. Oh. There you are, finally! Oh, <laughs> where have you been? What kind of voice should I give her? Um, God. Where have you been? My sister's trial is tomorrow. <laughs> um, who are you? <laughs> it doesn't matter who I am. It only matters who you are. The famous defense attorney, Mia Fey. <laughs> I'm proud of your transition, Mia. You look great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you're not Mia Fey, are you? I'm sorry, but Miss Mia Fey no longer works here. Ooh. So you are the coffee boy? <laughs> She's an ally. <laughs> wow, Mia, you sure do look different. Congrats on your top surgery. <laughs> I'm Phoenix Wright, a defense attorney. Right, right. Wait! You're THE Phoenix Wright? The Phoenix Wright from the Edgeworth murder case? Um, yep, that's correct. It wasn't Edgeworth who was murdered, though. That's a relief, then. You're better than nobody. I- I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'm not taking cases right now. But you are Phoenix Wright, right? The undefeated defense attorney? Look, I'm not accepting any new cases. I'm sorry, but you'll have to try elsewhere. Please! I'm out of time. But... Please. You have to help. It- It's my sister. You transformed into M -M -M Maya. Oh, Maya, could it be? You've changed, Maya. You look a bit different. Okay, I'll hear you out. Really? 
Thank you so much! My name's Emma. Emma Sky. I'm a scientific investigator. Never mind. You're not Maya. Leave my office. Scientific investigator? Uh, okay. Are you in my profiles yet? Ah, Miles Edgeworth! <laughs> <laughs> Emma Sky, age 16, high school junior and self-styled scientific investigator. Emma. Emma, was it? So you're a scientific investigator? Yes, that's right. Is something wrong? No, it's just, you seem kind of uh, jumpy or maybe just young. Young? Hi! Hi, Matt! <laughs> I'll be 16 years old this year. Oh, I see- Wait! Only 16? I'm set to be formally assigned to forensics in three more years. My work is becoming quite well known. At my age, no less. Um, so what exactly is your current position, then? Well, legally speaking, I guess you'd call me an 11th grader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm ready to do my job, at my age, no less. Those glasses are cool. They are very cool. <laughs> Great. Another future professional in training. The case. So... What's this about a case? You said the trial's tomorrow? How are you guys? I'm good! I'm good! How are you doing? How you doing? My sister didn't do it. She wouldn't stab someone with a knife. She wouldn't. Oh, sure. I'm sure. So, it's a murder case. Those are the only cases you take, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I don't care if there's a witness who saw her do it. She didn't do it. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. I know she didn't do it. It's a scientific fact. And there's a witness. You just talk to her. You have to talk to her. All right, I suppose I will. I promised her I'd bring Mia Faye, but that's interesting. How would she know Mia? And <laughs> How does she mi know Mia, but not know what happened to her? <laughs> investigator. So, you want to be a scientific investigator when you grow up then? I excuse me? I'm not a child, I'll have you know. Still, it's good to have a goal, albeit a, a very unusual one. Yeah, what a loser. Going into the scientific field. <laughs> I believe investigation should be done scientifically. Don't you? Uh, yeah, sure can't fault her for a lack of enthusiasm. If this case is handled scientifically, I'm sure my sister's name will be cleared. Your sister? F Phoenix, she's only said it like five times. I've been doing research, you know. I'm developing a new scientific method of case investigation. I'll show you when I'm done. I'm looking forward to it. Guess I should get down to the detention center and talk to her sister. Um, what's your relation to Mia? My sister asked for Mia specifically. This Mia Fay person was a few years below her in school. So they went to the same school, huh? She always told me to go to Mia if I ever needed a defense attorney. And, well, I need one. She proceeds to invent something that has already been invented. Don't diss my girl Emma like that. Um, incidentally, Mia is a woman. Now that you mention it, I guess it is more of a woman's name than a man's. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Emma. Well, it's nice of you to help your sister out like this. You must be close. Hmm? Well, actually, when she gets like she is now, I kind of hate her. Okay, well... <laughs> huh? But... But she's my only family. Oh, man. Another girl where her only family's her sister. I'm afraid to tell you. Your sister might... Get murdered. 
Watch out for this statue. It looks like the thinker, and it's actually a clock. <laughs> your only family? What about your parents? They died in a car accident when I was little. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's go see your sister then. February 22nd. Hmm, I wonder what's wrong with Emma. She got quiet all of a sudden as soon as we arrived. Ooh. Guard? I thought I told you I didn't want visitors. It's a sorry, ma'am. It's j just your sister. No excuses. Or did you not want to raise this year, hmm? Uh, uh, understood, ma'am. What was that all about? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me, <laughs> I'm this way. Uh, hi, Lana. Funny. I seem to remember specifically, specifically telling you not to come here. Perhaps my memory is failing? L look. I, I didn't want to come here either, okay? But your trial's tomorrow and you still don't have a defense attorney. I'll be the one in court tomorrow. This has nothing to do with you, Emma. Hello, Chief. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mr. Wright? <gasps> she knows my name. Uh, hey, how do you know me? Mia mentioned you. I've heard quite a bit. Err, uh, I'm sorry. What, what exactly is it that you do? My name is Lana. Lana Skye. I'm chief prosecutor for this district. Oh, God. Having me defend another prosecutor? I just got one acquitted. <laughs> you, you're a prosecutor? Two sisters, one a lawyer. Could this be a coincidence? <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's just the coincidence, bub. Emma, Lana, I mean, they're just like... The Fae girls. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? You know, you remind me a lot of my dead boss. <laughs> There's something you should know from the start. Which is... The suspect in this case has confessed to the crime. Huh? They do look very similar, yeah. Huh? But wait, but the suspect... The suspect is... Me. I did it. Well, Mr. Wright? Well, uh... Why don't you begin by telling me exactly what happened? Lana Sky, age 29. The defendant. Emma's sister and chief prosecutor for the district. The crime took place yesterday. February 21st at 5.15 p.m. It's not a dream. <laughs> That's quite specific. These are real people. <laughs> it was in the witness's de uh, de de deposition. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. Uh, my, that was a bit of bad luck, wasn't it? The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. The body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. The prosecutor's office, huh? In your subordinate's car's trunk? Classy. Yes, <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> I was arrested on the spot, caught red-handed as it were. Well, that's just great. All right, the victim. So who was the victim? An investigator with the police department. I suppose the correct term is detective. No! Detective Gumshoe, no! I'm kidding. I'm a loyal man. <laughs> a detective? Death was due to a loss of blood. He was stabbed once in the stomach. By you? Death wasn't immediate, but the wound was fatal. I see. Allow me to repeat myself, Mr. Wright. The victim was a detective. You know what that means, don't you? Uh-oh. <laughs> what? Mr. Wright, what does it mean? Well, it means... The police department will consider it a matter of pride to have me found guilty. They will use any means at their disposal to do so. This case gets worse and worse with everything I learn. Alright, Lana. So, your chief prosecutor. That is correct. 
I'm responsible for overseeing every trial handled by prosecutors in this district. I make sure the prosecutors have what they need to do, what they need to do the job and manage every aspect. Those are my responsibilities in a nutshell. They won't want, they won't want to go to my <laughs> Why are we planning weddings and atten wedding attendance? Lana's besties with Mia. Yeah, they're besties. Historians would call them best friends. That's an awfully large nutshell. <laughs> Still, I'm a little surprised. I would think you'd recognize the district's chief prosecutor, Mr. Wright. Huh? <laughs> yeah, Nia's my wife, so I outrank. <laughs> In fact, it's, it seems impossible you wouldn't. Um, Lana? What happened to your hand? Oh, this? I cut myself by accident. When I stabbed him, that is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> huh? I'm not very good at being a criminal, I suppose. How am I supposed to defend this? Time to change the subject. Wait, she was in the class ahead of Mio, wasn't she? Um, you were in school with Mia, correct? A few years above her? Emma told you that too, did she? Well, why not? I did drag him all the way here from his office. Although it seems he has very little in common with, with Mia. Hey. It was in law school. I was in my I was in my third year and she was aud auditing the class. She was different than the other students. Different? She was strong. She'd do anything to become a defense attorney. Anything. That was probably why she was attracted to me. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Guys, you gotta yeah, I think you gotta stop fighting over these women. <laughs> Guys, I'm afraid to tell you something about these women. <laughs> uh, excuse me. <laughs> Intellectually attracted. Oh, thank you for the clarification, Emma. <laughs> no one asked you for your input. <laughs> Lana was the top of her class in school. I was the best there was. Oh. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good in school too, by the way. Sounds a bit different when Emma says it. Well, Mr. Wright? I excuse me? As you can plainly see, I'm admitting my guilt. My friends are having a conversation and the notice are pissing me off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> As you can plainly see, I'm admitting my guilt. I think it's safe to say, there's no way you can take this case. None. But, but, Lana! Why? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> you never think of anyone but yourself. Oh, you never think of anyone but yourself. I know you didn't do it, Lana. I know. So, so how can you say you did? If I lose you, I'll be all alone. I, I hate you, Lana. No, turn back around. <laughs> Mr. Wright? Yeah? I believe our discussion here has ended. The rest, I leave to you. <laughs> um, you mean you're requesting my services as your defense? Don't lose any sleep over it. Your client has confessed, after all. The case is over. Seems a bit of a stretch to hate her for this. Just a bit. Right. I'll do what I can to get to the bottom of this. Lana has confessed to the crime, yes. But something doesn't fit. It's that look in Emma's eyes. There's something else going on here. And I'm gonna find out what. Yeah, that's your job. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. Huh? About what? My sister. She's not always like that, you know? Huh? 
I just never expected to be defending another prosecutor again. <laughs> She's changed a lot. She used to be so gentle, always smiling. Everybody out liked her. I see. Sorry, but I'm having trouble imagining that. What happened to her? I don't know for certain myself. Maybe it happened the day I was born. <laughs> I think maybe she, well, maybe not. Sounds like there's something there that defies a simple scientific explanation. Let's go check out this underground parking at the prosecutor's office, shall we? Okay! Okay. Uh, this is my attorney's badge. See this? <laughs> it's my attorney's badge. Ah, well, I've never seen a real one before. You're the first one who's actually been interested in mine, believe me. Its composition is mostly silver. The gold plating is flaking a bit. If she analyzed it scientifically. There doesn't appear to be any corrosion due to sulfides. I'd give you $50 for it. Uh, sorry, but it's not for sale. Yet. What do you mean, yet? Okay. Ooh. Underground parking lot. February 22nd. So this is the lot where it all happened. Looks like they're still investigating. Funny that my first visit to the prosecutor's office should be like this. Hey, everyone! Keep up the good work! Hey! What are you thinking? Well, they are going to be my co-workers three years from now, after all. Penny is very important to me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> no harm in saying hello. Actually, there is. You know, attorneys aren't supposed to- You know attorneys aren't supposed to examine crime scenes? But I do every single time. <laughs> I'm trying to not stand out too much here, see? Oh, um. Hey there! I don't know who this is. You expect- Oh, it's a- Okay, it's a cowboy. You expecting to go on notice around here, partner? P partner What do we have here? Looks like a bambina got loose from the ranch and is up to no good. Guys, it's me! <gasps> Oh my god, I'm in the game! <laughs> Folks gotta learn to keep them doggies tied down, partner. M Mr. Marshall! Oh my god, is that me? <laughs> no, it's me! <laughs> it's me! That's me! <laughs> Marshall looks more like a sheriff to me. Looky here, Bambina. I know how you feel. But this is my gang's gold strike, see? Strike? This is our claim. Our territory. Oh, I, I don't know what he said. If you're fixing to mess with what's ours, you'll regret it, partner. You know what dreams the cacti out in the desert dream? You want to? What's this guy talking about? You head long home now. Happy trails, Bambina. Was that a ombre, a friend of yours? A uh, kind of, sort of. Yeah, he's a detective. Who thinks he's a sheriff from the Wild West, it seems? Okay. Ladder! Aha! A ladder! Um, that's a step ladder. God. What's the difference? In scientific terms, please. S scientific, huh? Look at the basic nature of things, Mr. Wright. This all seems so horribly familiar somehow. Okay, well, um... Oh, there's a car! Hello! Well, no time to waste. Let's get hunting for clues. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Well, partner, looks like you got no intention of going home quietly. Oh, jeez. The sheriff. Like I said before, this here's our claim. You best be moseying along, unless you're fixing to bite the bullet. Good scary. Could you tell us one thing? Who owns that car? Well, well. Little Philly's got a good nose on her. This guy's the killer. 
You wanna know who rides that red Mustang with the body in her saddle, eh? Please. No problem, partner. How about about time for Vettel's anyway? Get yourself to the saloon up on the 12th floor of the prospector's office. Might just find you a cerveza you like. Prospector's office? Where does this guy think he is? And when for that matter? matter. Note to self, look up Vittles, Saloon, Cerveza. Maybe we should check out room uh, 1202 with the high prosecutor's office. In any case, stay away from the car. Why is it still question marks? I thought we learned his name. You can look around here all you like. Just keep your paws off our claim. All right, great. Okay. Great. Maybe there are some clues around here, Mr. Wright. Let's check it out. Well, this seems obvious. <laughs> What's this, a wallet? Um, excuse me, officer. Well, wait, what are you doing, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Free money! <laughs> Take it! What am I doing? I just found this wallet, so I'm handing it over to the police. Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Mmm, so great. So true. So true. Literally the best. I don't believe it. This is real basic. Anything at a crime scene is evidence. Let's be scientific about this, please. Just put it in your pocket. Oh my- This is not scientific, Emma. This is stealing. <laughs> How is that scientific? Sounds like theft to me. That's what I just said. Wallet hastily stuffed in the pocket. A foldable wallet found at the crime scene. There seems to be something inside. I'm called to duty already and at my tender age. Here, I'll teach you the trick to examining evidence in detail, okay? <laughs> give, yes, give me all the views. By the way her eyes are sparkling, I can tell she's been waiting for this. Okay, okay, now. Look at the court record. Okay. Oh, it's just doing it automatically. Okay. <laughs> you have to be sure to examine evidence carefully on all sides. Now let's start examining from every angle. Okay. Mm. Oh, 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 look. I think there might be a clue here. You should check it out with the press of enter. I'm on a, I'm on a controller, Emma. Emma, I'm on a controller. <laughs> ah! Emma, what button? Okay, it's X. This, this is an ID card. Sergeant Bruce Goodman, ID five eight four two one eight nine. See, well, isn't scientific investigation useful? I guess, though I don't see what science has to do with it. Interesting, interesting. Goodman's ID added to the court record. Let's be sure to examine every piece of evidence we find. I guess I've got to be on my toes from now on. Excuse me? Were you two all set? Us? Oh, nope. That's not the cowboy. It's a different voice. Hello, you. <laughs> What's this? She couldn't be. You're selling lunches? Here? This is a crime scene. Hello. Half and half, was it? Oh, uh, thanks. And you, sir? Uh, yes. Some crunchy goodness coming at you. Uh, thanks. Interesting way of doing business. This area is off limits to anyone without clearance, especially passersby. Or are you officers? Uh, no, but you. You don't exactly look, uh, like the type to have clearance. Wow, Emma. <laughs> well, that's hardly a way to greet someone. Even if my days as the cough up queen are over. C -c cough up? Uh huh? You know, I'm feeling kind of full. Maybe I'll pass on lunch. She did it. Nobody gives stuff for free without a reason. I'm quite connected to this case, you see. The images are burned to my eyes, you might say. Yes, all the sordid secrets. Secrets? Dear me, 
You are a slow one, aren't you? Jeez. Ooh. I'm referring to the murder. The stabbing of that detective. I don't care if she did it. I don't care. I forgive her. <laughs> what? I forgive her any day. A witness clearly saw me committing the crime. You mean you're the witness my sister was talking about? Please, cough up, queen. Tell us what happened. The name is Angel Star. Don't you go forgetting it. Or before you know it, I'll have you whimpering at my heels. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Any day. <laughs> See, me and, me and Phoenix, right? We're, we, we know what's up. We're on the same wavelength. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, if she means it. Oh. <laughs> the case. Somehow I knew. Yesterday was a day of destiny. I knew something was going to happen. Just like I know that the daily special on Friday every week is salmon. Destiny? Was yesterday special for some reason? You're a defense attorney, right? You should know then. You should know the foul misdeeds of the evil ones who haunt this den of inequity. What? <laughs> the evil ones? Prosecutors. They have no qualms at all about blackening the names of innocents. And yesterday they paid homage to the most evil one of all. They gave an award for King of Prosecutors. What a farce. So she's saying... There was some sort of prosecutor's convention yesterday. Thanks. Thanks, Emma. You're just as helpful as Maya. I was almost compelled to lace their lunches with something foul. Okay, this is- You are admitting to crimes? There are cops everywhere. Do you have a personal grievance against prosecutors or something? Or is there some kind of- Or is this- Is there some kind of scientific evidence of- This, um, evil? Young miss. Mock me at your own risk. You'll soon find out why they called me the cough-up queen. Ooh. Ew. The most heinous of all the evil ones. The one they awarded yesterday. It was in his car that they found the body. Ew. Proof that he devours the evilest lunches of all. For really? Really what? I'm, I'm really totally confused. One thing's clear, this lunch lady has a thing against prosecutors. Alright, what'd you witness, ma'am? So, what exactly was it you witnessed, Miss Star? It was a fascinating. It was a fascinating spectacle, to be sure. I hate how she's called the cop of Queen, yeah. <laughs> I, now feel I now feel I know what they say when they talk about a woman's wrath. To see Lana Sky wield that knife so. Huh? Her knife flashed in anger, bringing him to a sad end. It was truly a sight to see. I don't remember the lunch ladies in my school dressing up like this. <laughs> y you mean you saw the very moment of the crime? The sound of his silvery ties to this world being cruelly cut still rings in my ears. And the rhythmic beat of Lana Sky's knife. Wait a second, you know Lana Sky? <laughs> of course. It's quite a feat, becoming chief prosecutor. How many lunchboxes of sin does she pack to make that journey, I wonder? She always travels light. Now why would this pretty lunch lady know the chief prosecutor's name? Hmm. Um, could we ask you about a bit about yourself, Miss Star? I come here every day to sell lunches. I import only the freshest, the freshest and best from the Far East. For some reason, the box lunches are a hit here. Why not make the lunches here rather than import them? Did you say something? N no. Only true connoisseurs can understand. 
the kind you can only tell someone who has tried General So's Trilobite lunch set. <laughs> Never mind. You win. I don't even want to appreciate part of the Trilobite's flavor. Anyway, I come here every day to sell lunches. My boyfriend works in the security room here at the prosecutor's office. Damn it. She's taken. Your boyfriend? See the security room over there? The glass walled booth? Oh, the glass. <laughs> Sorry. The glass walled booth? I sell my lunches, and since I'm here anyway, I drop in to see him. Since you're here anyway, I guess selling lunches is more important than a romance. <laughs> so true. So true, bestie. So to scientifically analyze the data available so far, you, Miss Star, are a lunch vendor with an ulterior motive for coming here. <laughs> Useful analysis. Not <laughs> Phoenix. Damn. I think I've been pretty obvious that I will gladly whimper at her feet any day. <laughs> Did you have a bad experience with the prosecutor, Miss Star? I sense some hostility. Hostility? Huh. Perhaps. Prosecutors are all alike. And the bigger they get, the worse they smell. Okay. Kind of like ten-day-old clams in the chowder. Wonder if Miss Star was involved in some sort of legal trouble in the past. That'd be the, that'd be a sure cause of food poisoning. Scientifically speaking, of course. I mean, now you're talking cough up queen. Thought she was just a lunch vendor, but now I'm not so sure. Okay. Well, here is my attorney's badge. A defense attorney must be able to fight. How about you? Do you think you can win? How about tackling Lunchland's Pickle Supreme Lunchbox? Wow, it's really crunchy. A box of pickles? What kind? That's kind of a sad lunch if you ask me. Okay. Uh, well, let's go to the high, ooh, high prosecutor's office. Mmm. I wonder whose room this could be. <laughs> hmm. This is the kind of room that just screams, I can do the job. Quite a change from your office, really. Thanks. Look, look! There's a trophy or something here. The trophy? What? The shield? It takes real nerve to display stuff like this. Whoever's office this is, they must be a real stuck-up jerk. <laughs> Phoenix Wright. Never tire of prying into other people's business, do you? That voice. Mamma mia. Long time no see, Edgeworth. Huh? Ah! M -m Mr. Edgeworth! You know him from somewhere? You know this guy? Uh, of course! I'm his biggest fan! No, Emma, I'm gonna have to fight you. I am his biggest fan. My sister introduced us once, and... Right, her sister is the chief prosecutor, after all. Well, what brings you here? I'll warn you, I've been known to be a real stuck-up jerk. N no Did I- No! It was just Mr. Wright here, he- Hey, don't blame me! We're just here to investigate a murder case. Murder? A body was found in this nasty bright red sports car in the parking lot. Hmm? That would be my car. Ooh. What? Your car? I'll say one thing. She certainly can scream. Hey, boo. How's it going? <laughs> So the body was found in your car? That's awfully suspicious. You just got acquitted for murder. <laughs> Go ahead, say it right. You think I did it, don't you? After you went through all that trouble to help me last year, no less. But no, we don't think you did it. I mean, it was my sister who stabbed him. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Emma. Uh, wait, no, she didn't do that. I mean... <laughs> wait. So you're the chief prosecutor's little sister, then? Yes, sir! Emma Skye! It, uh... It's nice to meet you again! Well, that didn't sound forced at all. 
Uh, now I remember. You've really grown. I'll admit it was a surprise for me too. To think that my own car would become the scene of a murder. More surprising still. I'm being forced to prove my superior's guilt. I can understand- well, Wait! What did you say? Lana Skye is the chief prosecutor. The top prosecutor in the district. She can't prosecute herself, so I'll be the prosecutor at the trial tomorrow. You? Mr. Edgeworth? This must be fun karma's revenge. <laughs> to be honest, it's a bit of a miracle I'm still here at all. What do you mean? Rumors. You've heard the rumors about me, haven't you? Ooh. Miles Edgeworth. It's hard to remember a time when there weren't rumors about this guy. Forging evidence, arranging false testimony, illegal searches, you name it. Thanks, thanks to you, my innocence was established in the trial at the end of last year. A couple months ago, technically. However, there are some who say I'm the one responsible for the current incident. What? That's crazy. <laughs> some people need very little excuse to think ill of others. It's a fact of life. Impossible to stop. But... Some of them even go so far as to present me with toys like this. They think it's funny. Toys? That bronze shield? There's gotta be a story behind that one. Alright, Lana Sky. Chief Prosecutor Sky? Yes, we first worked together on a case two years ago. It was my first big case. That's right, I remember. Two years ago. I wasn't even a lawyer yet. Even then, I always felt that she was looking out for me. It appears I was mistaken. M mistaken? Why? I, I mean, I know she's not the warmest person, but I'm sure she felt some responsibility for you. Then, why? Why did she stab someone in the trunk of my car? <laughs> That's a good question. Not only that, she stabbed him with my knife. <laughs> Miles, I'm afraid to tell you this. Really sounds like you're the murderer here. What? Mr. Edgeworth, your knife was the murder weapon? To be specific, it was the knife I keep in my tool in the toolbox of the trunk of my car. Edgeworth's knife added to the court record. Oh, I bet it was. The murder weapon, usually in Edgeworth's toolbox, traces of victim's blood, no prints. Um, Edgeworth? What? Are you sure you didn't do it? <laughs> Why even have a knife? Come on, can he take a joke? Why does he even have a dual box? In case his car breaks down. Who knows? Like, people need toolboxes. They're very important. And knives are important for protection, of course. You have a strange sense of humor, Mr. Wright. Alright, let's examine your room. You got a steel samurai toy. <laughs> my, my, my. What an amazing bouquet. Just right for Mr. Edruff. I was looking at the toy. No kidding. Hey, there's a card on it. Back from the dead. Wendy. Wendy. I've heard that name somewhere before. And beside it, a giant steel samurai. Wow, I want one. Uh-huh. There's something written on the bottom of his foot. Between a rock and a hard place. Wendy. Wendy? she Mr. Edgeworth's fiance? No. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Definitely not. You got a tea set? Ooh, cute! What a pretty tea set! I go more for the instant tea bags myself. Amazing! The drawer below is filled with packets of tea leaves. They're all sorted by place of origin and flavor. Look at the royal blend! What an exquisitely splendid concoction! There's such a thing as taking a hobby too far. Oh, we got chessboard. Hey, a chessboard! I'm not too up on my chess, but it looks like blue's in a bit of a tight spot. The red knights have surrounded the blue pawn. Uh-huh. Those horses are mounted knights. Their swords have really sharp edges. <laughs> okay. And check out that poor pawn! His head is kind of spiky. Kind of reminds me of you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh my god. Mr. Edgeworth must be an avid chess player. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Edges surrounding a pond with spiky hair. Nah, it's nothing. Oh, I'm sure. I'm I'm sure. <laughs> oh, this, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god. He made he crafted these himself. That's not how Okay, he, he I bet he paint hand painted them himself too. What a freak. Whoa, these are all case files? They're stacked up to the ceiling. There's even a ladder. Odd. I thought Edgeworth wasn't good with heights. He must have someone get them for him. Oh. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? He must study these case reports so closely. He's so cool. You wouldn't say that if you saw him sweating bullets up on that ladder. I got a disc. A work desk. It's quite tidy as one might expect. What a nice desk. Easy to use and easy on the eyes. It's polished so well I can see my own reflection. Nope. Just flashes of gumshoe every now and then. Strange. Why did I just picture Detective Gumshoe? He's always in my mind too, Phoenix. It's okay. Maybe I'll take that name plaque as a souvenir. He is in the room. Don't. He'll sue you. I've been wondering, what the heck is this? It has a big K on it for Kyle's Kedgeworth. <laughs> oh, the prosecutors. Huh? What's that? It's the King of Prosecutors trophy. K -k -k King of Prosecutors? Looking forward to Southern Gumshoe. Stop! I'll kill you. <laughs> it's a great honor. They send that shield to the best prosecutor each year. What? So? So that K, that's... K stands for king? Yeah, you got a problem with that? I didn't design the thing. King of prosecutors? Kind of like employee of the month, only better. Given to Edworth, king of prosecutors, <laughs> at the BD on the day of the murder. Okay. Oh, I can click it again. So that's the King of Prosecutor's shield, huh? Well done, Edwards. You must be proud to be the King of Prosecutors. Congratulations, King of Prosecutors. Please stop saying that. That still doesn't explain one thing. Why is the tip of this shield broken off? Hmm. Wow, this jacket is even lacier than his usual ones. This must be his lucky trial jacket. Lucky jacket, right. I've never seen him wear it. Must be why he's lost every single time. I'm sure there's a story behind why it's in a frame. Oh, I'm sure. Maybe I'll be naughty and take a picture. She's getting way too excited about this. Tell me more about your knife. Okay. okay. He doesn't like you much, does he, Mr. Wright? Nah, with Edgeworth, it's never personal. It's all about winning tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. What about your trophy? So basically, this says you were the best of the best last year, huh? You can take that foolish grin elsewhere, right? I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Hey, Manny! Thank you for the street. Uh, thank you for the thank you for the stream. Thank you for the follow. Welcome on in. How are you? Thank you, thank you. I lost a day of work to receive that travesty. Huh? Why is that? I had to go to the police department to receive that broken shield. The police department? Yes. Right next to the to the police station downtown. You've been there, haven't you? Where Detective Gumshoe works? Um, I was wondering something about your shield. Why is it broken? What does it matter? I've got more important things to worry about. Oh, right. <laughs> Doesn't seem too concerned about his award, for better or for worse. Yesterday was a very busy day for the prosecutor's office. Maybe we should ask him more about yesterday? Okay, what happened yesterday? <laughs> Could you tell me more about yesterday, the day of the murder? Yesterday was the annual cleaning day at the prosecutor's office. Cleaning day? 
working with the police department, we sort and file all evidence for solved cases. We call it evidence transferal. Wiping your hands of old cases, in other words. Though in another thing, a ceremony was held at the police department. There's an annual review and awards for outstanding police officers and prosecutors. And that's when you got the shield? I was at the police department yesterday afternoon. I got back here at 512. That's very precise. Yeah, how does he know that exactly? People like m myself and Mr. Edgeworth pride ourselves on our precision, Mr. Wright. No, I, I place little faith in my memory. The only thing I trust is solid evidence. Edgeworth's parking stub added to the court record. Awesome. Thanks. This is the parking stub from the underground, underground lot. The murder took place around 5.15. Literally three minutes after. So the murder happened right after you got back? What right? I'd appreciate it if you could direct that suspicious glare elsewhere. Um... Hello? Uh, excuse me, but is Mr. Edgeworth, uh, anywhere on the premises? I'm Edgeworth. What is it? Oh, I'm here, sir, at the request of the chief, sir. I've got your report, sir. Report? What? Did you find new evidence in the case against Chief Prosecutor Sky? I don't like the way this conversation's going at all. Er, uh, Skye, sir? N no, sir. No name of that kind, sir. Not in this report, sir. I think I just heard Edward's lid blow. Mr. Edward's lid isn't on very tight, is it? I made a clear request to the police department, did I not? I need to focus on the trial tomorrow, so don't bring me anything unrelated. Uh, sir! But, but sir! I I'm just following orders, sir. They told me to bring this to you. I, I wasn't aware of the particulars of your arrangement with us, sir. Give us me your name. Uh, yes, yes, sir. M M Meekins, sir. Officer Meekins. Right. Officer Meekins, take your report and leave. And good luck with that raise next month. Ooh. Ooh. But, but, sir, I d didn't know. Poor guy. Looks like he was absent on the day they gave out brains and good luck. Oh my god, Phoenix. <laughs> why, why are you so rude? Right. Y yes sir <laughs> Okay <laughs> Meekins is the killer Never trust the goofy guys You called everyone the killer Every single person that's popped up You've called them the killer I can't believe Phoenix just yes sir to Edgeworth Guy caught me off guard As you can see I'm busy You may leave now L Let's do what he says Mr. Wright The victim was a detective From the same department as that patrolman just now Go down to the police department you could ask more there. Uh, thanks. Seems to have finally calmed down at least. Nobody's innocent in this series, even the victims are the killers. <laughs> um. Hi! Police department entrance. February 22nd, police department entrance. Phew. We're finally here. Why would they put the police department so far away from the prosecutor's office? Beats me. That took almost 30 minutes by taxi, and traffic wasn't even that bad. The police department, huh? I've only ever been to the criminal affairs next door. Hmm? Uh, hold on. What's that? Aw, it's so cute. Disturbing. Why does it undulate like that? And why does it have a faded blue handprint on its cheek? Wait, I know. This is the blue badger. They're trying to make him the police mascot. Wow, Mr. Wright. You sure know a lot about the police. Still, he does seem familiar somehow. Forget the blue badger. Who's that next to him? Someone appears to be... Dancing with the blue badger? Uh-oh. He noticed me. He sure is running over here, fast. Oh gosh, oh gumshoe. Hey, hey pal, what are you doing here? That's my line, Detective Gumshoe. Specifically, why were you dancing over there? What? Um, 
Well, well, at least he doesn't seem to be busy. This is our chance to get information. It's, don't the, call me crazy, but the blue badger is obviously the killer. The handprint is from the victim. Oh my gosh. Uh, I'll have you know, I'm a very busy man, pal. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. I'll give you one word of advice, pal. You better not agree to defend the suspect in this case. Well, why not? Huh? Well, well, it's just that the chief prosecutor has confessed to the crime. Hey, you're Maya, right? Why do you look weird? <laughs> she says she's summoned the detective to the prosecutor's office and she killed him. But what if she's n tell not telling the truth? Yes, well, n no, come on, pal. There's plenty of evidence against her. But, but what if the evidence was faked? Hey, pal. Can I speak to you for a second? Huh? Me? Why is this little girl so peeved at me? <laughs> She's a relative of the suspect. She's Lana Sky's sister. Whoa! The chief prosecutor's little sister! Just please investigate this case carefully, okay? Scientifically! Yes, sir! Oh, by the way, you might want to keep your voices down. You don't want to be overheard using words like faked. Huh? It's just it's a sensitive issue with us these days. <laughs> yeah, you think? So, what are you doing here, Detective Gumshoe? Me? Well, oh, nothing really. They kicked me out of criminal affairs. Uh, Detective Gumshoe, what did you do this time? What do you mean, this time? Then, what happened? I know things are busy right now. I mean, with my sister's case and all. It's true. We never had a chief prosecutor murder anyone before. Only lower-ranking prosecutors. <laughs> like Edgeworth and Von Karma. <laughs> Only the highest-ranked people are being led into criminal affairs now. The lowest-ranking guy in there is our chief of detectives. They're not letting any of us rank and file detectives in at all. None of you? I know this is an important trial, but isn't that a little odd? So anyway, I thought I'd spend the day getting a badger dance down, Pat. Um, is there anything else you could be doing? The chief of police himself is directing this investigation, pal. And Officer Marshall was assigned to the underground parking lot. Officer Marshall? Now that I think about it, Emma did seem to know that Marshall guy. A patrolman in charge of a crime scene. It's unheard of, pal. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I was wondering about that. What? The Dancing Blue Badger? It's my masterpiece. You made this, Detective Gumshoe? The Chief threw together some designs and I just did my thing, pal. Nice work. It's battery powered, so it can go anywhere. There's no switch, so it just dance, dance, dances until the batteries die. Poor Blue Badger. Fated to dance until he drops. Blue Badger panel, that is the court record. A work of art, designed by the Chief of Detectives and created by Detective Gumshoe. Okay. Look, the patrolman is saluting the other guy. He must be a detective. And then I said, Hey, you do that, your soup will get cold, buddy. That's hilarious, sir. I laughed so hard I cried. I guess he wasn't saluting. He was wiping tears from his eyes. They make a good pair. <laughs> the detectives in there look pretty busy. Just imagine, right now, behind those doors, a police drama in action. Somehow the thought fails to excite me. Okay, I, I know better than to go blabbing on about things I don't know about. about. No, I wouldn't want you to do that either. Good. You literally made it, but okay. <sighs> um, Detective Gumshoe, what can you tell me about this? Huh? Hey, pal. This is a detective's ID card. You can't just keep that. You have to turn it to the, in, the, turn it into the police. It's people like you that get me in so much trouble all the time. Meaning Detective Gumshoe must drop his card a lot. Let's see. Bruce Goodman. Goodman? 
Sounds familiar. Nah, my mistake. But didn't you work together with him in criminal affairs? Whoa! Now I remember! Bruce Goodman! He's the victim! Oh, well. That's what I thought. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? Yes. Can you tell us more, Detective Gumshoe? So this ID card belonged to the victim? He was a detective like myself. Detective Bruce Goodman. Hmm. Don't you think it's strange? I mean, why would the victim's ID card be lying on the ground where we found it? It's almost like he died here or something. Well, Detective Goodman should have been at the police department yesterday. But there was an evidence transfer for a ha for a case he handled two years ago. Evidence transfer. Mr. Edgeworth mentioned that too. But Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office. Well, that's the thing. It's hard to say this, but word is that Chief Prosecutor Sky called him out there to the parking lot. And lot is confessing as much. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, that's it! That's the King of Prosecutors Award that Mr. Edgeworth got yesterday. Were you at the award ceremony, Detective Gumshoe? Of course, pal! I got an award for diligence myself! Ah, uh, congratulations! I was wondering, why is the award a shield? And why is it broken? Oh, there's a reason. Um, I'll tell you what it is later. Apparently, he's forgotten. Of course. But I was proud of Mr. Edra for winning that award. Even with the naysayers in the prosecutor's office. Naysayers must be because of the rumors. How about this knife? I'll stab ya! Found in Mr. Edra's car, stabbed with Mr. Edra's knife, huh? What would drive Chief Prosecutor Sky to do such a thing? Wait, I, di I didn't mean- I mean, sure, of course, someone else really did it. <laughs> Someone who must have, um, someone who must have a grudge against Mr. Edgeworth. The car and the knife do seem a little too well organized to be a coincidence. Poor Mr. Edgeworth. What could have happened? I have to find out a little bit more about what's going on with Edgeworth. Edgeworth's troubles. What's troubling him? <laughs> what's his deal? What's going on in that brain of his? He's in a tough spot again. Again? It's almost like he just got out of being- a Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. Just got out of a murder trial a couple months ago. Well, it all started with the murder of that defense attorney, Hammond. But Mr. Edgeworth was found innocent. Listen, pal, there have been always been rumors about Mr. Edgeworth. Forging evidence, making deals with witnesses. Nothing outright, but there was always whispered rumors. Ever since he was accused of murder, no one's whispering. They're practically shouting. But, but there's no evidence against him. Well, Mr. Edgeworth has always had unusually strong ties to the department higher-ups. It's only natural that people would be suspicious. I had no idea he was under the gun. Anyway, this latest case has started a new rumor. People say the only reason he took this case is because he's aiming for the chief prosecutor position himself. What? But I know the truth, pal. Nobody wants to be the one who has to prosecute the chief prosecutor. Mr. Edward is biting the bullet on this one. He's doing this for all of us. And that's all I know about that. Not officially on the case, you know. Thank you. Why aren't you handling the case, Detective Gumshoe? We met the guy who is... What it was his name? The guy in the parking lot? That'd be Officer Marshall. He was appointed directly by the chief of police. Officer Marshall. Is he some kind of Wild West sheriff or something? Nope. Jake Marshall's just a regular officer. From West LA. For a moment there, I wasn't sure. Look, pal, let me try to make things a little easier for you. Show them this and they'll let you examine the crime scene. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. Letter of introduction. Received from Detective Gumshoe allows Barrett to investigate the crime scene. What is crossed off? Does it say $20? What is that? <laughs> I'll be surprised if this gets us anywhere. Can oh, I can, ex can I examine it? <gasps> I can. 
What does it say? I forgot about this new mechanic. Hey, look here. It looks like something's been crossed out. Maybe it was a letter or something to Detective Gumshoe? Let's see. Annual bonus. $20. Oof. Um, I think a couple zeros are missing. No? That sounds about right. At least in that detective's case. Maybe I should rethink my career as an investigator. Miles Edward, 1712. This is dated the day of the crime. The murder took place three minutes after Edward parked his car. If only he was held up at a, at a couple extra red lights. He wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Perhaps. Just goes to show you, you'll never know what'll happen when you run a yellow light. <laughs> so true, bestie. Alright. Uh, let's get the shield. Nearly nothing about the shield, except from this. Hey, check it out, there's a metal plate here. Oh, it's turned into Maya, oh my god. Hmm, it looks like the names of all the previous recipients are engraved on it. Wow, one guy's listed a bunch of times. Von Karma. Guess he must be a foreigner? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's probably it. <sighs> well, whatever, he, wherever he's from, he must have been an amazing prosecutor. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> I'd like to meet this Mr. Von Karma sometime. You really would not, ma'am. When she says it, his name does kind of have a ring to it. Oh, it's like a fist. Very interesting. Uh, knife. Maybe the detective for this case is a fan of Von Karma and maybe says that he's out for revenge. Hmm. This must be the victim's blood, right? Either that, or Edruff cut himself peeling an apple. <laughs> okay, Phoenix. What's Edruff doing with a knife like this anyway? Hey, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I always pictured him as an outdoorsman. Now there's a scary thought. Card, all right. My attorney's badge! <gasps> so true. Oh, like, my god, I can examine that. So this is what the back of the badge looks like. I always thought it had a safety pin. Each badge has a number carved into it. That way you could tell which attorney it belongs to. You mean you couldn't lend your badge to anyone? <laughs> No, I'd be found out right away. Yeah, I would never lend my badge to anyone. In any case. Ever. Well, that's no fun. Uh-huh. Definitely. That would never happen. Anyway, let's get moving. Just act like you're supposed to be there. Nobody will look at you twice, pal. Okay. Looks like the investigation is still going. I have to be getting back to the shop. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. See you in my dreams tonight then, baby. Oh, still here? Uh, hello? Why the surprise looks? Didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in criminal affairs too. What happened to the security guard? Oh, she faded. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. The victim. There's something I wanted to ask you. The scene of the crime. Cold grave for men who've lost their dreams. And me, I watch over them as they sleep, dreaming of the desert's harsh judgment. He's asleep. 
Well, should we show this hopeless case something to catch his interest? Oh yeah, I forgot the letter, the letter. Letter! How many boyfriends does this lunch lady have? She can have as many as she wants. <laughs> as long as she saves some for me. I mean, room for me. <laughs> I mean, what? Would you mind reading this for me? What's well, this? I warn you, fan letters to me go right in the spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe. Ah, uh, that old cow dog. Hmm. He holding a birthday party or something? Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction, it says invitation. Ah, I think you just miswrote it. Wait, why am I getting all defensive here? No worries. This proves it's from Detective Gumshoe. Better than a blood test. Guess I better let you in then. Thank you, Officer Marshall. Oh, that's right. He's a patrolman, not a detective. Which reminds me. Hey, wait a sec. Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by a detective or higher? Well, folks, clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hootenanny. Note to self. Police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. Detective Gumshoe's letter of introduction crumpled and discarded. Okay. Now can you tell me about the victim? Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good men always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Goodman. He was a detective, right? Well, 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 aren't you a feisty doggy there now? I totally died, didn't I? Yeah, so sorry. <laughs> Detective Goodman was stabbed here, 515. The smiling Madonna told me the tale. I think he means the witness, Miss Angel Starr. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here's the autopsy report. Death due to loss of blood, one knife wound. Died within an hour and a half of 4 p.m. Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. I'm reading romance manga and I'm combing my hair because it's calming, but I'm still I'm lurking still. <laughs> nice. Read your romance manga. I don't know if my laptop is still on. <laughs> Chief Prospect of Sky and Detective Goodman. I should be lurking. <laughs> Had nothing in common at all. Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So there's no motive. Goodman wasn't particularly a gifted detective. That's one reason why he didn't do much work with the Chief Prospector. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here to this parking lot? So it seems like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. Marshall. Um, I don't mean any offense, but Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective? You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago to tell you the truth. Oh really? Now he tells me. But you're a patrolman, you're a patrolman. You're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of a crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's odd, though. Detective Gumshoe was saying he had nothing to do- Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of his, this cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he don't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation? Ooh, ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Look, a door! This must mean something. I'm not sure that door means, that doors mean anything. No, it won't open. A mysterious lock. Fail to see what's mysterious about it. Mr. Wright, you need to learn to enjoy life more. Let's finish our investigation first, shall we? Hmm. 
gear, a phone. Let's see if it works. Hey, hey, don't touch stuff we don't need to be touching. I can't hear anything. My ears! No, my ears! Maybe it's due to the barometric pressure. What is she babbling about? Hey, what did you just say? See, you can hear just fine. The phone's broken. <laughs> this wall is in our way. It's not. It's got a faucet for water. Wait, I know. This wall is merely, merely a facade hiding the truth. This is no wall, but a water tank. Fail to see how it makes any difference either way. Interesting. Um... Bum, bum, bum. This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. What's so scientific about that? Should we check it out? Yeah, of course. What? Right, let's check it out. Oh, it's just, okay. It's just doesn't do it for me. All right. I could have did my, that myself. All right. We got a button. Boop. Hey. Hmm. This phone's still on the redial screen. Redial? What's that? Um, Mr. Wright? Most phones keep a record of all the calls you've made and received. You just press the blue button to display the last number you called. Convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know about things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Just you never know with people from your generation. Whatever, let's check this phone out. Now to see who the owner of this phone called last. Note to self, a defense attorney doesn't think first. He just pushes the button. <laughs> so true. Beep. Hey, that song. I know that. Hey, what's going on over here? Oh, uh, oh so sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Um, yeah. Whose phone is this anyway? It was on the ground over there. Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's? <laughs> How does he know but she doesn't? She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds according to this. Who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of those newfangled ringtones. Oh, that? Oh, I'm sorry. That was my phone. W w what? Your phone? Yeah, it's kind of strange, but someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. Wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh oh, I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. Property of Lana Sky, last call made at 518 on the day of the murder. Interesting. B block is through there, that's where visitors park. I can see the lunch land car over there, far in the distance. Hey, you're right. I like the cute design on the door. I can see a cartoon cow munching down on a juicy looking steak. That is weird. Doesn't that strike you as a little creepy? Just a bit. Just don't think too deeply about it and you'll be fine. This appears to be the car where the body was found. What gives that impression? <laughs> Looks like the lock on the trunk is busted. The crime took place. The crime took place in the underground parking lot at the prosecutor's office. Thank you for the hydrate. body was found in the trunk of my subordinate's car. Why a luxury car? It just screams, I have money to burn. Yeah, prosecutors get the big bucks. Hmm. This rope, is it? Yep, they laid it in the outline of the victim's body. So wait, 
The victim must have died when the killer closed the trunk on him. Yeah, it's a bit far-fetched that it's the body the car was- uh, the car the body was found on. I wonder how they came to that wild conclusion. <laughs> I- I don't know, no, it could be any of them. You've got to be the only person I know that would come to that conclusion. Yeah, 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 I know, I read- I, I know, I've already read this, I just clicked it. Oh, what's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look, something's written on it. Six seven five twelve two. You're right. Let's see. So it's an S. Six seven S twelve two. There's a name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, so what does it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? Go to self for deductive reasoning. Go to Edgeworth. Not right. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. Victim's memo found in the car trunk. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> forgot you were here. Um, Lana Sky. So there is no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but there's a gold mine of evidence against her. <laughs> and the prospector tomorrow was none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is beside him, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall? Yeah, Bambina. How can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Ooh. Is there something between this cop and her sister that I don't know about? Ooh. I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will. Someone's up to something here. But who? Office atmosphere. Suspicions round about it. Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence and arranging testimonies, you mean? He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Her sister has baited everyone. Unbeatable, that is. Until he met you. The rumors are just... Rumors, aren't they? These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. <laughs> but they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? I hate to say this, but it's your sister, Bambina. Chief Prospect or Lana Sky. What? My sister? Uh-oh. Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets, some people load them with deals. What, you're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. That's a, there's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. That way Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case. Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? Ooh. So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? Guess we got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Thanks, Emma. You say that on, <laughs> on the witness stand? Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song. Your phone pl I know that song your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? Ooh. That popular TV show for kids? The phone that rang earlier wasn't mine. Ooh. It was yours. At 518, just after the murder took place, your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. Property of Lana Sky. Last call was made to, uh, made to her sister Emma at 518 on the day of the murder. Ooh. A detective is murdered and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. Got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. 
I can't believe Phoenix has been hanging with the murderer this whole time. That'd be crazy if it turns out to be Emma. Oh my god, the plot twist. Rise from the ashes. February 23rd, 9.34 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby number two. That would legit be a good twist, though, not gonna lie. Oh, it'd be so good. Oh my god. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still a lot of gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me. No matter what the outcome. That would explain why Lana would be confessing to the crime. Because she could know. <laughs> she could know that Emma did it. Now, now, let's not, let's not point at Emma for now. <laughs> but it could be. <laughs> Don't worry about me. No matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Oh. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. But that's his whole thing! <laughs> the defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. Ooh. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. Oh! Oh! Oh, he got her! He got her! I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. My first trial without a Faye helping me. No one's gonna bail me out this time. Aw, Mia! I'll be alone in there, so I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. All right, let's go, Emma. February 23rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. Oh. <laughs> He's gonna keep flashing back to this case. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. Ooh. I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. Okay. <laughs> what is- <laughs> I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well. Mr. Edward, your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office, the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, he's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. <laughs> However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There is a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Miss Angel Starr, to the stand. The cough-up queen? <laughs> what was she doing there? Hmm? Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho-ho! Caviar! I've, I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, uh, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks? Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, uh, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So, this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name, profession, now. Me? 
The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Have you caught him? <laughs> that. Very well. Witness, please describe the incident to us. Who is that? <laughs> the prosecution will wait. I'm not finished reading. Hurry it up. Mm, very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as the Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, yeah, that's my wife, Matt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, back off, back off. I've I claimed her, okay? <laughs> She's mine. I got I called dibs. <laughs> Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh huh. What exactly does that mean? I wish you two the best. <laughs> Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was a first rate homicide detective. Wh what? Miss Starr was a detective? Uh huh. Uh, I know who you are. Cough up? Cough up, Queen. Angel Starr, Your Honor. Long time no see, let's go, we should go on a trail date. I'm doing check-ins because I'm not sure, so sure how my live my laptop is right now. <laughs> but, but very well, you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? My wife, Phoenix, we just discussed this. If I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? Oh, oh sorry, that's the judge. I suppose that's to keep uh, visitors from... whatever. The crime took place by the car in the back of A block in the car's trunk. Phoenix hates lesbians. <laughs> the killer stabbed the victim with this knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. Seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright? I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. Seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I hate to pr shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> Oh, jeez. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend, when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Oh. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand and she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. <sighs> Yikes. Hmm, bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching. Uh, your Honor, this is a murder. <laughs> As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be no, uh, nothing other than the point of the knife, which, is, which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. Thanks, Your Honor. So how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I, I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Okay. Witnesses are caught. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. How? You knew you would witness some murder. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhorrence of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. 
The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. <laughs> He's got beef with her. They've got beef with each other. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim, killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss mm. Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired? To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I am a pro, as you say. As you as you know, my testimony is unbiased, unbi unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. It's on the way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. How convenient. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend. The security guard. The that boyfriend? You have several? Can I be one? <laughs> yes. This boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? <laughs> the yet another boyfriend a position is still open for applicants. Uh, me, me, I'll be your boyfriend, Angel. I mean, what? I'll, I'll stick with the lunches thing. Note to self, the judge had to think before replying. <laughs> the security guard room is in the lot in A block. It's up on the second level as you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the other security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime? When I sense something, what'd you sense? You sense something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like, how would you say? Oh yes, it was like the feeling you get when you reel pumpkin chalk full of seeds. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Speaking of a detective's intuition, wasn't the victim, Mr. Bruce Goodman, also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. What? A young cheese? Pale white cheese, not yet tangy, uh, tangy, with experience on the streets. A greenhorn. Hmm. Then I, I must, then I must be, ha then I must be hard, yellowed, and sharp as a tack. Yeah, with the odor of an old cheese to match. In any case. There, in the lot, I felt stump bleh, something stirring in the back of my mind. Mm. Through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth's? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Indeed it was. Mm. Hmm? What an odd case this is. Sounds like you're the murderer, Miles. And the person you saw, you are sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. She's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, Rookie. Yeah, huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me? I'll fry you like a fritter. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That, that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. Oh, she got a photo. A, a photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime. My reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunchboxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why am I only seeing this photograph just now? You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. 
Ooh. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. The moment of the crime is photographed by Angel Star. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So what was the defendant doing at the time? The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Um. Don't see, don't see a knife. Don't see a knife. And you witness this? Angel should be getting in trouble right now for threatening a lawyer. You saw Miss Sky stab the victim with the knife. As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? And why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem. Oh, Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. <laughs> that was the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. <laughs> Yet it was still stronger than your ever feeble mind, Mr. Wright. Oh, wh what do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. And how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? Heh <laughs> heh. See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph, because no one has colored photos yet. Ah, uh, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem except you. Ooh, got him. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ugh, got a better idea? Uh, oh. Oops. No, I meant to hit objection. <laughs> I was just being silly. Now that you mention it, I see no problem here. Other than myself. Mr. Wright, you can't just let him walk all over you. Th that's just sad. <laughs> Feeling sad, Mr. Wright? Perhaps a bittersweet first love lunchbox is in order? Okay. <laughs> well, that was a waste of time. Let's continue with the testimony. Perhaps I should have dug a little deeper. Yeah, I didn't mean to- I didn't mean to hit that. <laughs> oh, god dang it. No, not- Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. She prosecutes with a knife in her right hand. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I clicked the wrong button. I was being silly. I meant to say objection. Yes, objection, please. Oh, wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? You run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a pr premeditated murder. Objection! Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in the photograph. Well, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh. If it was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. She could have just had gloves. You know, she could just like the fashion sense. Ugh. One moment. <laughs> I 
Those gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder. A serious offense. Witness, add this to your testimony. The murder was planned. The rubber the the, the, rub, the rubber gloves poop it. Um, I don't think so. I don't think it was premeditated. Because the murder weapon was found in the trunk of the car. It was Edris. She didn't bring her own murder weapon, so it could not be premeditated. A bang, bing, bada boom. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edris' trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. The bloody murder weapon! A red car, all belonging to the prosecutor there? The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, your prosecutor's bad people! <laughs> One sec. The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this more, more, this moida. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion. To me, the gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon? Mm -hmm. oh. oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're gonna plan a murder, don't- you don't forget the weapon! Ask me, I'm an expert. Oh. Order, order, order. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Oh, jeez. Right. Yes, Edward? I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. What? What does that mean? Hold on. I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Don't know why I'm making him sound like this. Not over such a trifling detail. But, but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. Hmm. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution needs to prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she be wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you. My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now. And... Angel's deduction. And with that, we'll do this... Next time. Ah, yes, because it's time to go. How long do we stay for? Oh, almost two hours. Look at that. Um, bom, bom, bom. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, probably, maybe, maybe I'll stream tomorrow. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll see. We'll see how I feel. I like doing daily streams. They're lots and lots of fun. 
and we'll have to see where this trial goes next time. Goodbye, everyone. Send some love over to who I'm rating, and I'll catch you later. Bye-bye. See you guys later. Bye.